All right, now we're going to go on to the next activity, which is posting. This is because right here, if I'm just looking at these transactions, I don't know how much cash I have in the bank. So the posting activities, which we're classifying like items together. So posting means we're going to copy these transactions into a ledger. The ledger book has a page for each account. So there's going to be a page for cash, and a page for accounts receivable, and a page for supplies, and a page for delivery equipment, etc. And each page will have the transactions that only go to that particular account, and will keep a running total balance of that particular account. Now, on your electronic paper that is in shared files, besides having this journal, you also have, um, you have this, these ledgers here. And you can see on the ledgers that there is a name of the account, and then it says account number, and you're going to have to put the account number. And once again, when you get down to the bottom of one, if you need more, like here's the bottom of the cash, and you can just put yourself to the right again and again and get as many more uh, rows as you want to. You can also change the name. So here's one for equipment, and our account is delivery equipment, so I can change that account name by going in there like that. You can put your account numbers in as well. So over here it says account number and cash is 101. Okay, we have on our Excel sheet we have our chart of accounts. So accounts receivable is 122. Um, delivery equipment is 185. Okay, now, the, we also have one for supplies, so you can um, make as many more of these as you need and they should be all in order. And I don't have these in order um, because I'm just showing you a few transactions. Accounts payable is 202. Capital eleven. Okay, so we've got enough. I've got enough accounts here to start posting the few transactions that I have. But you would go ahead and get your entire ledger set up, where all the accounts are in order. They all have their account number in post it in there. And then, once you have everything set up, you would start posting your transactions. So let's post these three transactions that we have here. Okay? So we're going to go ahead and start right at the top. We're going to debit cash for $2,000 on June the 1st. So I go down to my ledger for cash. I copy the date, that's step one, copy the date. Oops. Okay, step two is copy the amount, debit, 2,000. Once again, if every number in the cash ledger is going to be a whole number, 
you don't need to put pennies, but even if one is going to be half pennies, you need to make sure all of them have the dash or uh, the point zero zero. Notice I did not put anything in the item column that stays blank until we get to chapter five. So nothing in the item column. Copy the date, copy the amount. Now step three is the, is the tricky step because now we're having to calculate out the balance. Here we have um, two balance columns, a debit balance column and a credit balance column for each account. Sometimes you only have one balance account and you have to know whether that's debit or credit. Now each account is generally only going to have numbers in one of the balance accounts. So cash no, is an asset. Its normal balance is therefore a debit. So every number, every balance is going to be in this debit. I should see no numbers in this credit balance column ever. Now, in real life, um, can our checking account balance go negative and then we would have a credit balance in the cash account? Well, yes, but that never happens in Accounting 101. And so, therefore, every homework, every exam, every, everything that you hand me for cash should have every number in the debit column because every balance, no matter what you're doing over here, you're debiting, crediting, and we're going to be adding and subtracting, but every balance is going to be a debit balance. Now, how do we get the balance? We're going to take the previous balance and either add it or subtract it to the new balance, to the new amount that we just put in there. Now, if we don't have a previous balance, then we can assume it's zero. So here we don't have a previous balance, so we can assume it was zero. And, of course, we know that cash is a debit balance, so that zero is a debit. We have our rule of thumb. Debit and debit is add. Credit and credit is add. Debit and credit is subtract. So we have a zero debit, and now we have a 2,000 debit. Debit and debit is add. So I'm going to add the zero plus the 2,000 is 2,000. Step four is where did this information that we just copied come from? It came from the general journal GJ, or you can put just a J, and what page number? It was page one, so GJ1 or J1. Step five is to go back to the journal, go to the post reference column of the journal, and say where did I post this to? I posted it to account number 101. Never put these post reference numbers in here until after you post it. If you put these numbers in before, I can guarantee you that you're going to make mistakes and you're going to miss posting some stuff and then I'm going to know that you put your post references in before you post it. All right. Now we have AA Capital Credit 2000 on the same day. So I go find AA Capital. Here it is. Copy my date, June the 1st. Copy the amount, 2000 credit. And now I need to calculate out my balance. Now the capital account is the owner investment account and that has a normal credit balance. And so my previous balance is zero credit. And my new amount is 2,000 credit. Credit and credit is add. So zero plus 2,000 is 2,000. Step four, where did this information come from? GJ1. Go back. Step five, put in the account number that you posted this to once you're finished. Okay?
Let's go on to the next one. On the third, we have delivery equipment debited for $1,200. I find delivery equipment, copy the date, June 3rd, copy the amount, $1,200. Now I need a balance. My previous balance is zero. Delivery equipment is an asset, therefore it has a debit balance. Debit and debit is add. Zero plus twelve hundred is going to give me a new balance of twelve hundred. Where did this come from? DJ1. Go back. And this was account 185 that I posted it to. Now we have a credit for cash on the third of twelve hundred. I find the cash page. Now I'm not going to put June again because it's already there, but I am going to have to put the three. And again, if it was another transaction on the first, I would still put the first. It's only the month that doesn't keep getting put down. Okay, so I've now copied the date. I'm going to copy the amount, which is 1,200 credit. Now my previous balance is 2,000 debit. My new amount is 1,200 credit. Debit and credit is subtract. 2,000 minus 1,200 is 800. The balance of the 800 is still a debit balance, so it still goes in the debit column. Where did this information come from? J1, go back. Where did we post this to? 101. Now we've got delivery equipment on the 5th, 900 debit. We find delivery equipment. Put in the 5th. Debit 900. Previous balance was 1,200 debit. New amount is 900 debit. Debit and debit is add. 1,200 plus 900 is 2,100. Where did this information come from? DJ1. Where did we post this to? 185. Now I have accounts payable. 900 credit. So I go to accounts payable. There is no month in there, so I do need to put in the month. That was the fifth. Credit 900. Now, I don't have a previous balance, so the previous balance is zero. Accounts payable is a liability. Liabilities have a normal credit balance, so that zero is a credit. Credit and credit is add. Remember the rule of thumb, debit and debit is add. Credit and credit is add. But only if they're different, if you got one debit and one credit, then you have to subtract. Okay, but this is credit of zero and credit of 900, so that's add. So zero, 900 is 900. Where did this information come from? GJ1. Go back. Where did I post this to? Account 202. Okay, so we've now completely uh, posted our three transactions.